Senate Bill 83 could bring major changes to how college campuses operate. Yeah, so what are its supporters saying and what concerns do the bill's opponents have? We dive into both sides in our big story today. Earlier this week, the Ohio Senate passed Senate Bill 83, also known as the Ohio Higher Education Enhancement Act. The Ohio House now gets to take up this controversial plan, which supporters say will allow more free speech for conservatives on campuses. The plan passed in the Senate late Wednesday afternoon. The vote was mostly along party lines, with the majority of Republicans backing the proposal. Senate Bill 83 would change how professors teach and what students can learn. It would also bring changes to what the public has access to when it comes to observing. I believe this is the worst assault on academic freedom that Ohio has ever seen. If we do not act now, I fear we will continue down the path of servitude to a woke agenda from which there may be no return. There's also a similar version of the bill in the House that was debated earlier this week as well. So what exactly does Senate Bill 83 propose? Well, it focuses on a pretty wide range of changes that would overhaul parts of higher education in the Buckeye State. Now, it would ban most diversity and inclusion training requirements with a few exemptions. The bill would prevent universities from taking stances on controversial topics such as abortion, electoral politics, marriage equality, and climate policies. Faculty would also face some tougher evaluations to see whether they're teaching without political, racial, gender, or religious bias. Syllabi would also be required to be posted online for the public to see. Universities would also be banned from financial relationships with Chinese universities. Another part of Senate Bill 83 impacts the curriculum that colleges in Ohio offer. Under the rules proposed by the bill, students would be required to pass an American history course with a mandatory reading list in order to graduate. That list contains the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Federalist Papers, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Gettysburg Address, and the letter from Birmingham Jail. All right, so we're talking Senate Bill 83 today, and joining us to speak today is Repre Representative Josh Williams. Josh, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Thank you very much for having me on. All right, so we want to cover both sides of this bill, of course. So let's start. What benefits do you see this bill bringing to schools, bringing to this area? I believe it will bring intellectual diversity to the classroom. It will allow students to be open and honest about their true opinions without the threat of reprisals from professors or institutions if their opinions do not align with that of the institution or the professor. Okay, so this bill, it's already been met with some negative pushback. What do you see as some negative effects, if any, that this bill will bring to schools? I don't see any negative effects. Uh, I know that there's concerns. There's this uh, uproar about censorship, um, that students believe they're going to be censored. Uh, but I believe that's a, a red herring. I believe if you read the text of the bill, it actually is implemented to promote open and honest dialogue within the classroom. It prevents other students from infringing on your right to have your own opinions. And it makes it where institutions shouldn't come out in favor or in opposition to important subjects, um, which could chill free speech on campus. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're in a classroom where your professor clearly outlines their position on a particular subject, whether or not the class actually is pertaining to that subject, that will have a chilling effect on students that do not hold that view. Your, your professor holds your grade in, in their hand. The institution holds your degree and your enrollment in their hand. And there's implicit pressure on students and faculty to align with the views uh, of the institution and underlying tenure professors. Okay, so we do, what do you think the reason is for the timing of all this? Why now is this bill trying to be passed? Well, it was brought before in previous GAs. Right. It's been a working progress. Um, it, it's once again being introduced. Uh, we're seeing time and time again these issues arising on college campuses across the United States. Uh, me personally, I was interested in this bill do, based on my experiences in, in uh, college uh, not too long ago. All right. Well, thank you so much, Representative Josh Williams, for taking the time to speak with us today and share your insight. Thank you. For another point of view on this issue, we are joined by Dr. David Jackson, a professor of political science from Bowling Green State University. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Glad to be here. First question is, what would the impact of this bill be on colleges and universities here in Ohio? 
The central concern that we have for this bill is that it's uh, bad for students, that this bill with, uh, is an attack on academic freedom. It's an attack on uh, the teaching of the sorts of subjects that students need to, to hear about and that students need to learn about. Faculty spend their careers, and, and I've been president of the BGSU Faculty Association for 13 years, and over the course of that time, I've, I've literally talked with thousands of faculty members um, across Ohio, uh, either in person or, or in various other forms. And most of us, in fact, uh, almost all of us are, are committed faculty members to broadening the minds of students, to helping students think critically, to doing our research and scholarship and creative activity in, in the freest and in, in, in the most uh, full way possible. Uh, the bill as it's proposed will have a chilling effect on the universities here in the state of Ohio uh, and reduce students' capacity to learn about controversial subjects and controversial matters. So where did it come from? What was the groundswell and how did it come about? <laughs> It seems that this is a, a national uh, movement right now to demonize university faculty. And, and look, uh, there's been a number of anecdotes and stories about you know things that have happened uh, on campuses, you know, in Ohio and in other places. Um, but the fact of the matter is, again, I just want to stress that uh, faculty are overall uh, not interested in political um, doc indoctrination, not interested in ideological indoctrination. We're being demonized in many cases by out-of-state forces uh, who ha have a commitment to creating an enemy and making an enemy. And, and somehow, some reason, they've chosen university faculties to, to, to be this demonized enemy. We, we do not try to indoctrinate students. Uh, the, the most we try to indoctrinate a student is to get them to do the readings on time and to have questions and comments about them during the class. And you're in a unique position where you actually teach about political science. So how would you teach even this bill? Uh, how would you even address this? You know, if it goes through, what, what are you going to do? We're going to continue doing what we have to do, which is equip our students as best we can to be critical thinkers, problem solvers, people who show up on time and, and ready to work. So uh, we will, of course, um, and I'm not speaking for Bowling Green State University here. I'm speaking for you know myself. What we'll do, of course, is obey by you know uh, what, obey the law as we must. Uh, but we will continue to work through with the central mission that we've always had, which is helping our students become critical thinkers, productive citizens, and the workforce of the future. All right, Dr. David Jackson from Bowling Green State University, a professor of political science. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Something to note, Ohio is not the only state considering laws that affect college programs. Just earlier this week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation to defund diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at all state universities. The new law bans state colleges from spending state or federal funding on programs that, quote, advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion, or promote or engage in political or social activism. The law also places restrictions on what material state universities can teach and how they can teach it. In remarks, Florida's governor said such programs are a, quote, distraction from the core mission of higher education. Remember, you can watch the full big story on our 13ABC News app. That's available as a free download in your app store.